got your Bibles? Luke chapter 2, please. Verse 1, And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. And this census, took, uh, this census first took place while Quirinius was governing Syria, so all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace and goodwill toward men. And so it was, when the angels had gone away from them into heaven, that the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told them. And when eight days were completed for the circumcision of the child, his name was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you that you, Holy Spirit, have faithfully uh, recorded the events of that wonderful and glorious day. I thank you that you were so careful to make known and make, abro- make known abroad into, into literally nations that, in that season of the wonderful, wonderful anointed one that was to come and bring salvation into this world. I ask you, Holy Spirit, for your cleansing this morning, and I ask you for your fresh anointing this morning, not only upon these lips of clay to speak, but also upon our hearts that we might hear what you're saying unto the church in this hour. And I pray this in Jesus' wonderful, wonderful, wonderful name. Amen. There's been thousands and thousands and thousands of stories and thousands and thousands and thousands of sermons that have spoken on this portion of Scripture down through the ages. Got a couple of thousand years into this now. And uh, every Christmas and every single church and every single uh, nation, every single generation, all these, all these years, and so many, many people have heard the same wonderful, wonderful story of the first advent, the first uh, coming of the Lord Jesus Christ into this world. And we should never, ever, ever tire of hearing this story because it is the story of the love of God and the grace of God that was that was reaching into this world, a world that was sin sick, a world that was lost, a world that was dying, a world that was a prodigal world. And he came running into this world with a wonderful, wonderful anointed one to bring the tidings, the good tidings of the message of the gospel of the love of God into this, into this world. And I'm so thankful that he did. I'm so thankful that he came. I'm so thankful that the story was faithfully and traditionally told down through the ages. Yes. There's some traditions that are really, really, really good traditions. Right. And we need to keep them. And we need to pass them to the generation upon generation upon generation. Yes. There's nothing wrong with tradition. As long as it's centered upon Jesus the Christ. Right. 
And that's so important. And so I come and I bring you good news this morning. Good tidings from heaven this morning. Because the, the word is still true. The word is still alive. The word is, is still applicable to our hearts and applicable to our lives. Regardless of what God has given you to do in this world. Regardless of, of what your job is. Regardless of the, your spiritual condition. Regardless of your economic condition. Regardless of your relational conditions. It doesn't matter. The message is still the same, and it's still true, and it still brings great joy from heaven into earth. And so I pray that in this season that God has given us, and that we commemorate the birth of Christ, and that we celebrate His birthday, and we, we reiterate, we, we bring this story back again and again and again and again and again. Don't lose the wonder. Don't become so grown up. That you miss the beauty. The absolute beauty. Of the glory of God coming into earth. I need his good news. And you need his good news too. And so I bring good news this morning. About the first advent. The first coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want to focus on one particular scripture this morning. Uh, it just it just caught my heart and caught my eye once again, but I want to give this to you in in the seventh verse, Luke chapter two, verse seven, it says, "And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. The very first set of clothes that Jesus wore on his body were swaddling clothes. Perhaps you know the story behind swaddling clothes. I don't know, but I'll just share briefly with you. Swaddling clothes were used primarily, not only, but primarily they were used to, uh, to wrap and to hold together the spices and, uh, and, and they were burial clothes. And they would wrap these strips of cloth around the body of their loved one who had, who had uh, uh, passed away and who had died. And, and here... Coming into the world was a prophetic action by the Spirit of God. An announcement from the angel of heaven to the shepherds in the field. You're going to find, this is going to be your sign. This is, this is, this is when you're going to find out that you're in the right place. You're going to find out that he came to wear grave clothes. He came with a purpose. He came as the Lamb of God that was slain from the foundations of the world. He came into this world announcing, just by His clothing, announcing the purpose that He was here for. It's true that He came to reveal the Father, of course. But let me tell you something. You can have all the revelation of the Father that you want to, but if you're not redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, it won't do you any good at all. It will be a revelation that will never apply to your life and will never change your heart. He came to redeem us. He came to pay the price. He came to pour out His heart. He came to pour out His life. And as a child, as a baby, as a newborn, they wrapped Him in swaddling clothes. They wrapped Him in, in clothes, uh, the grave clothes that would announce the very purpose for His coming into this world. He was born to rule, He was born to reign, and He was born to die as the great sacrifice for the sins of all mankind. My sins. Your sins. Our sins. The sins of all mankind. He came. He came to wash us, He came to cleanse us, and He came to birth us by the blood of the Lamb. And I'm so thankful that not only am I washed by the blood of Jesus, not only are my sins atoned for, but there's this wonderful, wonderful reality that there is life in the blood. And that life of the Father, not only am I cleansed, not only redeemed, not only purchased, but I'm lifed. He puts His life inside of my heart, inside of my life, inside of my spirit, he, he takes me from the world of darkness and He brings me into the world of light. And not only that, He takes the world of light and brings it into me. He came to, <coughs> he came to change everything. Uh, water, honey. Thank you. 
He came to change everything. Uh, it was prophesied. Look, look in Isaiah with me. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 and 7. You know these scriptures so well. Probably you know them by heart, but it's awful good to look at them. It says in Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 through 7, For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given. And the government will be upon his shoulders, his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Upon the throne of David over and over his kingdom to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward, then even forever. And the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given. The child had to be born before the son could ever be given. It takes me to that wonderful scripture in John chapter 3, verse 16, that, that, that says so beautifully, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, so that whoever, whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The Son was given so that we would have everlasting life. The Son was given. And the Son was given because the child was born. He comes in this wonderful, ever-increasing uh, revelation, ever-increasing light. It says in the book of Proverbs that the path of the just is as, a, is as a, a shining light that shines more and more and more into the perfect day. And so the wonderful light of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ is still shining and it's still increasing. There is no end of the increase. There is no end of the peace. There is no end of the blessing. The blessing of God was released in that day and time into the face of this earth and it has changed the whole earth ever since this very moment. Everything has been changed. His great grace, His abundant mercies came in the form of a little baby. He came in the most vulnerable form that you can come in. He didn't come, He could have, but He didn't, he didn't come as a mighty uh, Mighty king and a mighty warrior. He could have easily done that. He's going to come back, you know. And he's going to come that way when he comes back. But he didn't come that in the beginning way. He came as a baby. He came in absolute, total vulnerability. Totally, completely dependent upon the Spirit of God to cover him and to keep him in this world. Amazing faith that the Father has that operates and functions. This Christ child was born so that the Son could be given. It says in Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, she, speaking of Mary, she will bring forth a son and you shall call his name Jesus for he will save his people from their sins. I don't need to ask the question, how many people in this room have sins? There's not a one of us that don't. Not one. Not you. Not me. Not any of us. In fact, we are encouraged to continue by in the, in the epistle that John wrote. He says, he says, if you walk in the light as he is in the light, his blood cleanseth. His blood continually cleanseth. It's in the hourest tense in the, in the grammar. And it's, and it's clean now, but it continually cleanses. Why? Because we need it continually cleansing. How many have discovered that you needed the cleansing of the blood of Jesus after you were born again? Hmm? Me. Me. The older I get, the more I understand, the more I know how great is this blessing of cleansing and forgiveness from heaven. This good news from heaven. I need it. And the closer you get to the grave, the more you're going to really understand. You need that cleansing. And you need that cleansing daily. I used to have a book in my library. Someone graciously relieved me of it. God bless the soul who holds it. But it's a, it's a wonderful old book. I can't find it. I've tried to find it uh, uh, ever since I was relieved of it. And so I'm searching. I'm still searching. I'm going to continue searching. I like looking for books anyway. 
But it was, the, it, it was a book that, that recorded the last words of many, 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 many human beings just as they were dying. And do you know what the vast majority of them said? Their last words, wash me again. Cleanse me again. It's amazing how close we come to God that everything gets reduced to simplicity. It's just all the stuff that we think that is important as we grow up and as we walk in this journey in this lifetime. Suddenly, there's a lot of things that are just not that important. Cleanse me, wash me. Once again, wash me in that blood. That was the cry of many, many people. You shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Jesus literally means Jehovah saves. He is the one who brings that divine, the Greek word is sozo, that wonderful, wonderful salvation from heaven, the root word of of salvation. Uh, is that word sozo, and it literally means to save, to heal, to deliver, to make whole. And he came to save, he came to deliver, he came to heal, and he came to make me whole. He came to conform me and to make me into his image, and you too. And so we have this wonderful, wonderful season that God has given to us, and and it and it's it's this 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 beautiful picture of healing and salvation and and deliverance and wholeness, body, soul, and spirit. And so because he came, because he took upon him clothes, the swaddling clothes, and he was wrapped in swaddling clothes and he was laid in a manger, and that was the sign for all of the shepherds to see. Because he was placed in that in that place in that, and dressed in those clothing, he was announcing, the Spirit of the Lord was announcing to every generation afterwards the purpose that he had come for. And I want to tell you something. His purpose has never changed. His purpose remains the same to this day. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And those wonderful, wonderful swaddling clothes are so significant. Because you know what that tells us about? It tells us that He took upon Himself our iniquities. He took upon Himself. Listen, listen to this. It's in, it's in uh, Isaiah 53. It says, verse 4 and 5, Isaiah 53, 4 and 5, it says, Surely He has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed Him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon Him. And by His stripes we are healed. And so this wonderful, wonderful salvation that was brought to us, this wonderful, wonderful prophetic word that was given to us that you're going to find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, just that fact alone, just that that revelation alone was speaking the gospel of the kingdom to us even as he was a little baby. And he was announcing to the whole world and he's announced to the whole world every single generation. He wore my clothes of death. He wore my sin. He he took upon him my iniquities. He took upon him my rebellions. He, He brought them. He took them. He bore them. He carried them. He wore them. Why? So that I could wear his. That which is rightly given to the king of glory. Robes of righteousness. Robes of glory. When I leave this world, and when you leave this world, we're washed in the blood of the Lamb of God. I'm telling you, we're not going to leave this world in swaddling clothes. We're going to leave this world in kingly garments, robes of righteousness, the white righteous robes of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to be clothed in the glory of the living God. And if we had somehow had these amazing eyes to be able to see in that dimension, the truth is, is that we're already given those clothes. They're already given to us. We already walk in the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ. We already walk in the joy of the Lord. We're already walking in the peace of God that passes understanding. And do you know why it was possible? Because He came and He was wrapped in swaddling clothes. He came and He took my sins. He came and He took your sins. He came and He carried all of the iniquity of the whole world. 
And he bore them gladly. And he rose up. And he grew up. And he walked as a man. And he walked and he marched steadfastly right to that cross. All of his life was geared to go to one place at one time on one day. And he did it. And he was faithful. He was just and true. And as the Lamb of God, he laid his life down in this world. He made real in this world what was already done in eternity. He brought the reality of the of the Father's heart. He brought the reality of the sacrifice. He brought the reality of the, of the purchased redemption into this world. And He made it real in our world. And He touches. And He doesn't stop there. He takes the same gospel and He reaches into our hearts and He reaches into our life. And it doesn't matter where we are when He reaches us. We can be in the worst condition of worst. Or you can be sitting in an ivory palace of millions of dollars and He can still reach your heart there. It doesn't matter to him. He can reach every single human being. He is the king of glory. But he was born into this world as a little baby. And he was wrapped in swaddling clothes. And he relates to every single being. He can span every single chasm. And he can reach every single heart. And I'm so thankful because he reached me. Wonderful, wonderful carol, Christmas carol. We're going to sing it in just a little while. Joy to the world. The Lord has come. Let earth receive her king. Let every heart prepare him room. And heaven and nature sing. They sang when he came. And I guarantee you, whenever we're going and we're stepping out of this world and we're coming into the next world, you're going to hear the voices of the angels singing that, that time too. When I was in Bible college, there was an educated idiot that was a professor. And he said to us, he tried to teach us, no, angels don't sing. I know, he's an idiot. God forgive him. No, angels, angels don't sing. They only say. The Bible says they don't sing. They only say things. Well, I'm sorry, but, but the angels already have ruined exactly what he said because I've heard them singing before. Oh, yeah. They do sing. They sing. It's the highest, it's the highest form of speech there is, is singing. And oh, the praise. And it's why we sing. And it's why we praise. And it's why we adore Him. And it's why we, 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 give, our, we give our voices to the highest expression of worship. We sing to Him. And oh, may God help us to sing to Him more than singing about ourselves. I'm not so much interested in singing about me. I'm very interested in singing about Him. Worshiping Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. In this season, we've got something to sing about. And that something is actually a someone. Do you remember what the shepherds said? They said, let's, let's, go, to, let's go to Bethlehem and let's see this thing that has been been, uh, uh, that, that has been made revealed to, that has been revealed to us. You know what the word thing is? Rhema. Let's go to Bethlehem and let's see this living word. Let's see this rhema from heaven that has already been revealed to us. He's not a thing. It's a person. And he's alive and he's well to, in this day, in this time, in this hour. And regardless of, of our condition, regardless of whether our bodies are weak or, or sickly or whether we're in full picture of health, it doesn't really matter because His grace is sufficient for every single step and every single thing that we go through in this world. His grace is sufficient. Why? Because He came and He wore those swaddling clothes. That's why. He came and He took my iniquities. He came and He took my sins. He came and He was dressed in human flesh. Human flesh. Think of it. The almighty, omnipresent, omniscient, all-knowing, all-powerful, creator of the universe, reducing himself down to one human cell. How can that be? Only God could come up with something like this. And only God could pull it off. 
Can you imagine God himself reducing himself and allowing himself to be placed inside the womb of a woman? Oh, my. How wonderful. How beautiful. How gracious. How marvelous. The idea that God would, would bring forth an incarnation into this world that he would make his appearance in this world and that he would clothe himself with flesh. And not only that, but that he would purpose in his heart and purpose in his life to not only be clothed with flesh, but to take upon himself and be clothed with every sin of every human being of every generation that would ever live. And take our punishment for them. Amazing. It's all there, right there in the very, very, very beginning. If we only had that, that would be enough. That's the good news. It's important, you know. My wife, we have this amazing, my wife and I, we have this amazing dynamic between us of pink and blue, you know. She's pink and I'm blue. But somehow, some way, there's some things that I'm more pink and she's more blue. And, and she's more blue and I'm more pink. And that's a strange thing to say, but it's true. She'd like to have, just, just give her the whole ending of the whole story. She doesn't want the details of anything. And I live for details. The beauty is found in the details. The wonder is found in the most minute little things. And in these things, the angels of heaven paid attention to the most minute details. Here's your sign. Here's your sign. You're going to find the babe, and he's going to be wrapped in swaddling clothes. Angels said that. They paid attention to details. I find that God pays attention to the details. And he reaches into our hearts, and he reaches into our lives. And he lets us see and he lets us know and he lets us understand that every sickness, every iniquity, every rebellion, every sin that we have ever been involved with, whether it was instigated by us or it was done to us, it doesn't even matter. Every single thing that he took it upon himself and he willingly, willingly drank the cup of iniquity and he willingly took our sin upon himself. This was declared in the very, very beginning. And oh, what a glorious message it is. The message of salvation is the message of Christmas. And the message of Christmas is the message of salvation. You cannot separate them. They're one and the same. And it's so beautiful and it's so wonderful. And so in this season, when we're giving gifts and we're rejoicing and we're singing songs and we're And we're joying to the world for the Lord has come and we receive our King. Don't forget for one moment why He came. And don't forget for one moment that that His purpose never, ever changed. There was a wonderful man of God. His name was Robert Murray McShane. And he was this amazing, uh, amazing young man. And he loved the Lord with all of his heart and and he... had the gift of writing and he had this gift and he, would, he was a poet and, he was, and he, was, he was such a wonderful young man of God and he, and he wrote this amazing poem and, and there's this, this, this one verse of the poem that is, that is stuck in my heart from the, from the moment that I read it. it. It was like it was burned. It was etched into my heart from the moment that, he, that I read what he had written and he lived many, 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 many years before I was ever born. Robert Murray McShane, in one of the, 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 the verses of one of his poems, it says, when this, when this passing world is done, when has sunk yon glaring sun, when we stand with Christ in glory, looking o'er life's finished story, then, Lord, shall I fully know, and not till then, how much I owe. We owe him everything. He owes us nothing. And somehow, some way, we have a tendency to get it all turned around. And if we're not careful, we'll let the human attitudes and the human thought processes and the human mores and the human 
entitlements even get into the church to where we think that we're entitled to something. The truth of the matter is he's entitled to everything. He's worthy of it all. And oh, how we need to turn our hearts and turn our eyes upon Jesus and we need to look at him. We need to gaze upon him. When those shepherds went into that manger scene, they walked into that barn with all of its fragrances. You ever grown up around a barn? You ever have to shovel out the stalls? Huh? Yeah. Isn't it a wonderful fragrance? That's where he was born. It wasn't in a nice, clean environment. He was relegated to the place where the animals were. He was relegated to the lowest position of the low. And his baby blanket was swaddling clothes. That's my Jesus. He went to the lowest of the low to find me. That's where he went. He went to the lowest of the low because that's where I was. And if all of us had eyes, we would all see and we would all understand that that's where we all were. And it doesn't matter what name brand clothes you wear now because there's coming a day when those clothes won't matter at all. There's only one set of clothes that's going to matter in the end of this thing. And that's the clothes of the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the, that's the shoes of His salvation upon our feet. That's the crown of victory that He will give to us. And do you know that He will clothe us with what He was deserved to be clothed with? He will give to us the crowns of glory that He deserves to have. He is so gracious and He is so wonderful. He came into this world in the lowest state to reach us. But He's not going to take us and leave us that place. No, no, no. He came down all those steps. It's, the Greek word is called kenosis. And what it means is it's a pouring out. You'll find it in second chapter of the book of Philippians. In the fifth verse through the twelfth verse is the divine kenosis, the divine pouring out of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he started from heaven and he was poured out step by step by step. You'll find them there. There's seven steps that he came down. And he came all the way down to the cross. Every single step of the way. And he announced it when he was born in this world. And so in this season, this wonderful season that we set aside every single year, rightly so, rightly so, I know that let the theologians argue about the exact day. Don't worry about it. Nobody, I've got to give you a secret, nobody really knows except the one who was there. Only God knows and he's not telling. It doesn't really matter. What matters is, is that it's real in my heart. That, that he's birthed in here. Not only was he birthed in this world, but, but then he is birthed in here. And he comes in with the same level of humility. He comes in not demanding things. He comes in not trying to, to push you around and, and make you do this and make you do that. No, 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 no. Comes in like a little baby from the very beginning. And it's our privilege and it's our honor to learn how to receive him and to nurture him and to let, if you can imagine, it's, it's there for, for the imagery of it, for the understanding of, of how this, of course, he's, he's God Almighty, of course. But the truth is, is that he came as a babe. And when we're born again, we're made as babes in the kingdom of God. But, but the babe of Christ Jesus comes into our heart and, and everything changes when he comes in. We sing it, just one touch. Well, let me tell you something. That one touch lasts for eternity. Yes. It's going to last for eternity. Yes. We're going to have more, of course, but it's really just an, an, a revelation, an unveiling of what has already been done. Yes. He loves you. He loves you so much. 
He loves you so much that he came as a babe. He loves you so much that he came and he submitted himself to the Father's heart, to the Father's will. He loves you so much that he came and he, and he took upon himself all of the sin and all of the iniquity that you would ever commit and that you would ever even think of committing in your life, in my life, in our lives, in our generation, and in every generation past, and if he tarries, every generation to come. He covers it all. His grace, His grace was announced when He came as a baby. You're going to find Him. He's wrapped in swaddling clothes. And so when you see the pictures of the manger and when you maybe go and visit a place where they're reenacting and and bringing forth a, a, a nativity scene where you see the baby Jesus there in the manger and everything looks so nice and clean and wonderful in that day and in that time and in that place. It wasn't so nice and clean and wonderful. It was difficult. They were not wealthy. And he who owned all things humbled himself to reach every single one of us in every single one of our conditions. And he knew all the way back then what would happen in the 21st century. And he knew exactly your circumstances and he knew exactly my circumstances. And the angels are declaring joy to the world. The Lord has come. Let earth receive her king. Hallelujah. Why don't you stand?